The word radar is believed to have been derived from the phrase radio detection and ranging. For many people, radar is difficult to understand. However, its principle is simple. Short radio waves, like acoustic waves, are reflected by objects that come in their way. In the radar, a short burst of electromagnetic energy is transmitted, hits an object and then returns. Since the velocity of propagation is known, it's easy to calculate the distance to the object. As long as we are able to measure the time from which transmission is started until the echo returns. The transmitted pulse must be short in order to distinguish between echoes located close to each other. On board a ship, the radar has two main tasks. One is to function as an aid to prevent collisions. As with the help of radar, one can see in fog and darkness. The other is to assist navigation, particularly at landfalls and when navigating in coastal waters or in archipelagos. Radio waves are electromagnetic wave motions of the same kind as those of light and consists, like all other wave motions, of a train of crests and troughs. The wavelength is a distance between two successive crests of waves. By international agreement, electromagnetic waves of a length between 0.1 and 30,000 mm are known as radio waves. Frequency is another way to measure wave motion. Frequency indicates the number of crests which pass a fixed point per unit time. Frequency and wavelength are two terms that are closely associated. If the wavelength is long, that is, the distance between the crests is long, comparatively few crests will pass the fixed point per second and the frequency will be low. If, on the other hand, the wavelength is short, more crests will pass the fixed point per second and the frequency will be higher. Most marine radars transmit in the X-band, 3 cm, C-band, 5 cm, S-band, 10 cm, corresponding to approximately 9,000, 5,000 and 3,000 megahertz frequency. Each type has its advantages and disadvantages. For example, a short wavelength is preferred in shipboard radar systems because there is a relationship between the size of the antenna and the horizontal beam width. The larger the width of the scanner, the smaller is the angular beam width for the same wavelength. This radar block diagram can be divided into five main parts. Antenna, with motor, gear, etc., which directs and transmits radio waves. Transmitter with magnetron, modulator and trigger which generate radar waves. Receiver with mixer, amplifier, equalizer and video amplifier, which receive the reflected waves. Display unit, which measures the time and presents ranges and bearings in a suitable way for navigational purposes. Power supply with power transformer, which provide power to the various radar parts. It is not necessary for the radar operator to know 
Two radar terms are often mixed or used incorrectly, namely radar scan and radar sweep. Remember this, a radar sweep is the transmission of one radar pulse only. A radar scan is one complete 360 degrees rotation of the antenna. During one scan, normally several thousand sweeps are generated and transmitted. In modern radar systems, both sweep and scan correlation may be used to filter away unwanted noise. The pulse repetition frequency is defined as the number of pulses transmitted per second. Long pulse equals low PRF, while short pulse equals high PRF. Long pulse means more power and longer radar range, but less resolution in range. Short pulse means weaker pulse less radar range, but better resolution in range. Selection of pulse length may affect the radar range resolution in a negative way. The radar minimum range depends mainly on the following parameters. Antenna vertical beam width, selected pulse length, height of antenna, installation of antenna, ship's trim, the radar minimum range is hardly ever a problem in practice when using the radar for traffic surveillance. Press the buttons to see example. The radar range will vary with changing weather conditions, however. During standard atmospheric conditions, that is 1013 millibar air pressure, zero altitude, and an air temperature of 18 degrees centigrade, the following formula can be used. Where R max is radar horizon in nautical miles, H1 is antenna height in meters, H2 is target height in meters. In practice, during normal weather conditions, navigators can expect the radar horizon to be approximately 10% further away than the optical horizon.